Hi, I'm Peter Prevost, and welcome to the screencast for Chapter 4 of Data Science for Water Utilities. In the previous chapter, we loaded some laboratory data from CSV and Excel files. In this screencast, I'll show you how to calculate basic statistics with this data. To start this process, first we need to open the 04statistics.r file from your scripts folder, which should look a little bit like this. There's a warning on top that says that I haven't installed the E1071 and moments packages. We'll be explained later what they mean, uh, but they're required to be installed. So when I click the install button, so our studio has detected for us that we're using some functions that are not available. So therefore it is kind enough to tell us we need to install these, which only takes a moment. And more about those packages later. First, um, let's clear the data to have a clean slate. Let's clear the console as well. First, I load the radar package and the dplyr package. Now, these packages form part of the tidyverse. So we could do library tidyverse and load all the packages. But I'm being a bit more frugal here and only lo load the packages that I need. We read the CSV file, as you saw in the previous chapter. And we filter that to only have the turbidity data. But to simplify some of the formulas um, that I'm going to show for descriptive statistics, I'm converting the turbidity results to a variable named x. Normally, we would like to use descriptive variables, but for this, uh, for simplicity, we call it x. And n shall be the length of the number of samples, which is 734 equal to the number of rows in the data frame. So in descriptive statistics, there are different measures. Um, first, we talk about measures of central tendency, such as the arithmetic mean, which, as you will know, is the sum of x divided by n, which gives us 0.36. But r also has a built-in function called mean, and that gives you exactly the same value which also has a weighted mean function. And what this does, so let's say we have a small data set here with uh, observations of 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 1, and they are weighted 7, 5, and 2. What this means is, for example, that 0.2 occurs 7 times, 5 times 0 0.5, and 2 points times 0 0.1, and the weighted mean function will do this for you. This is effectively a shortcut of what we see down here. Now the rep function repeats certain values. So let's reverse engineer this. If I evaluate rep 0.2.51 and 7.52, what I will get is 7.2s, uh, 5.5s and 2.1s, which then goes into the mean function to give us um, the weighted mean. So these two lines are equivalent. So I'll cal calculate the median. There's a function for that, but there is no function for the mode. The good thing is that the R language lets you write your own functions. And without explaining it in too much detail, because we delve deeper into this in a later chapter, I have written a function here that can calculate the mode. Now, I'm not going to fully explain this, but we have, we're have telling here that mode becomes a function, that it takes one parameter, which we shall call x, and then the code is between these curly braces. So now we have a function, and it will appear in the global environment, a function called mode, which I now can use to calculate the mode of this data. Now, this function only works in specific circumstances. It cannot detect bimodal distributions, for example. Uh, measure, measures of position or uh, quantiles are often used in water quality data. The summary function is very useful and I use it a lot in my day-to-day -day work. The summary function gives you the minimum, the first quartile, the median, mean, third quartile, and the maximum of a vector. If you prefer Tukey's five number summary, which uses a slightly different way to calculate quartiles, but in this case, gives you exactly the same values. Oh. This gives you um, a vector of quantiles, but you might want to be more specific. And that's what the quantile function does. Now the difference between a quantile and a percentile 
that a percentile is a quantile, um, but in percentages from zero to 100 instead of a quantile being zero to one. So quantile x gives you pretty much the same output as the summary function, but without the mean. Size the probs um, parameter lets you specify exactly which quantile you would like to see. So if I want to see the 95th um, percentile, the 0.95 quantile, I say probs equals 0.95, and now I'm getting a 95th percentile. We could also, for example, put a vector in that variable, excuse me, in that parameter. And in this case, we are getting the 33rd and 66th percentile for that data. Uh, there are multiple methods to calculate percentiles. As a matter of fact, there are nine, and the quantile function can apply each of these methods. The difference in these methods is the way in which um, values are interpolated if there is not uh, an exact number to calculate a percentile. And what I've done here, um, which I'm not going to explain in detail, you can look at the script yourself, is manually calculate a 95th percentile where the interpolation method um, is linear. Then uh, in this case, we get 0 0.4, 0 0.4. There's also a method called the YBOO method and some regulators specify which percentile method you have to use. And in, in my jurisdiction, they specify the YBOO method. And that's on research I found that the function to calculate r in that case is not p times n but p times n plus one so in other words it's a slightly more uh, conservative way of measuring a 95th percentile and if we work that one out we will find that it's 0.425 because the interpolation is done slightly different you don't have to write these complicated formulas and do this from scratch uh, in type four happens to be the Linear interpolation and type six is the uh, Ibu method. Like to know more about the various types that the quantile function can handle, then go to the help file for quantile with question mark. And you see here a very de a detailed description of all the parameters, but also all the different types that are used in their mathematical formulas. And if you really want to do, delve down into the depth, there's also some um, the references here for you where you can read up on exactly the mathematical basis of these. Methods of dispersion tell us how how wide, how, uh, how big the distribution is. And of course, we can calculate the minimum for the x maximum. We can also do a range, which gives us a vector of the minimum and the maximum. If we want to know the difference between those two, we can obviously subtract them from each other. I could, for example, say range X, I could say, excuse me, max X minus min X, which is 8.75. I can also do diff, which is the difference function. And the difference function calculates the difference between each subsequent element in a vector, which becomes useful when we do talk about time series. So diff of the range X is 8.75, because it's the difference between the second and the first element in the vector. The interquartile range uh, is a useful value to describe a distribution, which happens to be the difference between the 25th and the 75th percentile. So here's a formula to calculate that. But base R package also has the IQR function that does exactly the same. Now, interestingly, what you can do with a function, if you run the function without parentheses, I'll actually show you the underlying code. And what you see here is exactly what, I, almost exactly what I've written above with a few more um, bits in there to trap any arrows. So, and the default type for the quantile is seven, which is uh, the type that you see here. And being able to look at the source code for your functions is a very valuable uh, thing to do if you really want to get into the depth of how your statistics are calculated. The variance, there's a formula for that. And here is the formula written down in, um, in basic functionalities. Now, what you see here is that the 
um, moment, which is the x minus the mean x to the power of 2, is divided by n minus 1, which is the Bessel correction. So you need to be mindful that that's what R uses when you calculate variances, which is important when you have a small sample size. And again, you can find all these things, all these details in the help functionality. So it's always a good idea to fully understand the functions that we use. Also, same for standard deviation. In the standard deviation function SD, the R language will use the Bessel correction and uses N minus one instead of N. Shape are statistical measures that tell you something about how skewed a distribution is. So whether it's symmetrical or not, and if it's asymmetrical to the positive or negative side. And to decortosis, which is um, the, I guess the fatness of the tail of the distribution. Now to calculate this, we have this very long formula which uses the third central moment or previous formulas we saw the second central moment. Now we could write this out, we could write our own function, but there's also a package to calculate this. And that is the moments package, which we just had to install. And the moments package, we could write, for example, library moments. And then we can use a function. But another way to call a function within a package is to use the package name, moments, a double a semi column, and then the function. So I can run this as well without using library. And that be exactly the same. Now, in this particular case, you see that N is used instead of a Bessel correction. So that's important in a moment. Uh, the fourth central moment, it happens to be the kurtosis. Again, the complex formula and the moments package can help you out. Again, you can look at the source code here. Oops. You can source code here and find out the formula that is used. We also have the E1071 package. I don't know who came up with that brilliant name, but that's what it's called. Now, that package has its own skewness and kurtosis formulas. And they give you a slightly different value. They are able to calculate basic statistics, a very important function that you need to be able to execute is grouping data. Because we have a data frame here, a laboratory set with different suburbs and different sample points, different analytes, different dates as well. And in practice, you might want to actually have statistics for each analyte or for each analyte by suburb, etc. And to do that is grouping the data. Now within the tidyverse, we have a grouped table. So if I call here lab data, if I create a new variable called lab data on the store grouped, this is the from the dplyr package. I then group the lab data by measure. Now let's do this. And then let's look at the lab data grouped data frame. And what we see here is a table of the same size as the lab data, but it has groups. It has four groups by measure. Now this special property of this data frame allows you to do the following. The summarize function you can summarize the lab data grouped data frame now by measure, because that's how it's programmed. And for example, we create a new variable called minimum, and that's equal to the min of the result. The median shall be the median, P95 maximum and kurtosis, just some examples. So what happens when I evaluate this? New variables are created for each measure. So we get four times a minimum, four times a median, and four times a P95 and the other two. So I get a little table that looks exactly like this. We have a measure for each of the measures, which were which were the groups, they appear in rows. And in the columns, we have the variables that we just created. And I could, of course, go on here as well. I can also add uh, skewness is moments double skewness. So I can, for example, I can just keep adding variable this this way. 
And the outcome of this is another data frame that we can then use in subsequent analysis or data visualization. We can also do this with multiple variables. For example, I can create a lab data grouped or grouped by measure and by suburb. So if I show this on the screen, then we see that it's the table with the same size, but there are 28 groups because we have seven suburbs and four measures. Going back here, if I can now say summarize lab data grouped, and in this case, I want to count the number of samples, which gives us a data frame that looks a bit like this. Chlorine total for each suburb and the number E. coli, each suburb and the number, and R cuts off when it shows you the top 10 rows. Now, this might look familiar because, yes, we also have seen the count, lab data, measure suburb, and then name equals samples. Gives you exactly the same data frame. Again, showing that there's always more than one way to achieve the same result um, with running code. Now, if you'd like to learn more about uh, the content um, of this screencast, then feel free to purchase my book, Data Science for Water Utilities. Also, feel free to contact me if you have any questions or any comments about any of the content on my website or in this screencast. Thanks for your time.